Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Talking TSR, episode number 39. Uh, the numbers just keep getting higher, but then again, that's how math works. So uh, welcome, welcome, everybody. I am your co-host, Chris, and to my virtual left, as always, is my co-host, Rick. Rick, say hi to everybody. <laughs> how are you doing, folks? Well, Halloween season is upon us, right? Yes, it's coming. It's coming fast. It's coming fast. It's it's definitely, we're in the deep throes of uh of football season, of mm -hmm. Halloween, of pumpkin spice season, it's all coming. Before you know it, it's going to be, you know, Christmas time, and then it's all downhill after that. Yeah, it's, um, it's a roll of holidays. Yes, yeah, so Game Hole Con uh, is wrapping up this weekend. I, Goodman Games was there with a booth and had a presence. So for all of those uh, viewers out there that were at Game Hole Con, I hope you guys had a good time. I hope your travels are safe and you're recovering, and, and this is your post-con activity you're going to kick back and listen to a bunch of old guys talk about uh their favorite um adventure modules of all time um and uh one other quick announcement um we have uh pax unplugged coming up in just over a month the first week of december in philadelphia we will have a booth there i will be there at the booth manning the booth every day uh if you're in philadelphia if you've never come to pax unplugged before I'm telling you, folks, uh, come to PAX Unplugged it, for no <laughs> other reason for the dealer's room. I mean, it's it's a it's a great dealer's room. It's not not as not as extensive as Gen Con, but I think at least on par with Origins Dealer's Room, if not possibly better. Um, especially if you like board games and role playing games. So uh, come check us out. Uh, Rick, how are you doing? How's everything going? Good, good. My favorite time of year, my friend. Awesome. I, I love the weather. I'm a big Halloween fan. I'm down. I'm not as much a football fan, but you know, I'm sympathetic to those who are. And uh awesome. yeah, it's just a good time. Lots of this is the fast time. It's like you said. I think once we come upon Halloween from now to the new year always is a blur. It's just a blur. It's like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, boom, 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 boom. You know, for yep. me. Um, so yeah, I know the new year is going to, you know, we're going to be looking at 2023 before we know it, but yeah. uh, very psyched about tonight's show. Um, yes, tonight's show is going to be, be very, very interesting. People. This is yeah. essentially two and a half years in the making. So I did one of these back um, at the very first Cyclops Con, I believe it was. Um, it was myself. This is terrible. I can't remember. Joe moderated it. It was Aldo um, from Impressions. Um, and I think it was Mike Curtis. It, yeah, Mike Curtis. Tim. Okay, right? wasn't Tim? Okay, Tim. Tim. I Mike sure was Tim definitely was in there. I remember that because okay. I saw it. Yeah. Um. So anyway, if anything, folks, it, our show talking to us is probably kind of came out of that show. I remember it was shortly after that or around then when. When Joe said, hey, you should do a show that's, you know, something like this, talking about the old TSR adventures and have nuts. And so so we really probably owe this show to that that event that happened. You know, one of the good things that came out of the pandemic um, and Cyclops Con. So um, so I did not. So I did my top 10 back then. I did not look at my list from that back then um mm. i'm fairly certain i mostly have the same modules on there that i had back then but i have no clue i wanted to, to do this a, a fresh perspective because mm -hmm. um as we were talking about we've actually done deep dives on almost all of these adventures um and it really was good to do these deep dives for the shows that we've done the last two and a half yeah. years yeah. It really, um, you know, A, it exposed some warts, but also mm -hmm. it uncovered some uh, additional gems in there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on this. What about what about you? What's your, what's your high level thoughts about um about doing a top 10 list like this? Yeah, I mean, I was not part of that original show, but I, I remember when you folks did that. And like you said, and I think I commented to you in the green room in the last show, because we the last show we went over our favorite module series. And our close reviews of these modules, especially when you look at them in modern day, as opposed to your, you know, rose tinted glasses view of these modules from the past, because let's be mm -hmm. honest, you know, you look at them in a different eye in the present day. And like you said, it, it shows the warts and it shows the good things. And even tonight when my list shaped up, it's not exactly the list I thought I would have going in. There are some yeah. that were higher and some that were lower than I would have guessed. So it's it's kind of really interesting. Um, okay. I mean, 
I guess one thing we should we should broach tonight before we start a couple of things, but like uh, I guess we should mention mention Dungeon Magazine's top thirty list because that always comes up. I think whenever people talk about it, you know, it's like eighteen years old or nineteen years old, but it's still people still look at that. You know, yeah. Um, if if we could get the cover of uh, Dungeon One Sixteen up, that they that was their take on the top thirty adventure modules of the time. Now I think they included first, second, third edition. Um, and they also kind of covered series in one shot, yeah. like you know. So th they maybe went a little different than we're going to go here, but they did get together a number of game designers. Um, and if you look at their top five, it's interesting. If we could get up uh, the page spreads, Elena, for Dungeon Magazine two to five, and then one, I believe their top five picks they had Expedition of the Barrier Peaks for their number five. Temple of Elemental Evil for number four, the Tomb of Horrors for number three, Ravenloft for number two, and then number one. And I kind of consider this a cheat. They just threw it mm -hmm. to the whole giant series. <laughs> you know, yeah, just said, definitely a ah, the G's, the D's, the Q's, you know, we'll put it all together. You know? <laughs> and they gave it to, which is one hell of a series, but they basically gave that their top pick. Um and I guess they had, what, a panel of like 10, 10 game designers and some Paizo folks in there. Yeah, at least, at least. I think something like that, right? Or panel that, so. yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, that, it kind of, I didn't let that affect my list tonight, but it, you know, I, I feel like that's a reference point, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a definitive list. Like you said, we're using it almost 20 years later. We still refer to that list. So um, I, I think, you know, there, you definitely have to take some some value in that. Um, I did not look at that list before, um, mm -hmm. you know, before I put mine together. I kind of sort of know that list pretty well uh, since we've we've done the uh, the OAR treatment um, on most on, on, on several of those adventures or parts of those adventures. So. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you determine your top 10 list for tonight? All right. Yeah. So this is great because then we're going to we're going to I'm going to throw the same question right back to you because we did okay. very different things. But, you know, when I did the adventure series list, I just did a did a list in my head and just ranked them one through ten. Mm -hmm. This time we use science science this time, folks. Um, <laughs> so I used a, a website called PubMeeple. PubMeeple. Excuse mm -hmm. me. It's a, it's a ranking engine. And Elena, if you can throw the link for that up in the um, in the uh, comments in the chat, that would be awesome. Uh, so basically, you know, you input a a list of anything. You can do this for books, characters, movies, whatever you want. You put ten things in the list or more, and then it's gonna it's gonna ask you a series of of A B questions. Do you like uh, module A one or A two better? And then you just say I like A one better. And then it goes, Do you like A one or A three? And then you say I like A one. Do you like A one and A four? I'm like, Oh, I definitely like A four. You like that? And it just does a series of these um, questions, and then at the end of it, it'll say we're done. And then you press print and you 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 print out your list and it will rank everything one through ten based on your preferences it's really cool um and and i wanted to use it this time just for the fun of it i i, I was mm -hmm. aware of this search this uh, ranking engine and i've never used it before for something official so uh -huh. um i did it and sometimes i've heard people will use this list but then they will massage it afterwards to look at the list and say ah oh, no that's not really number one or that's not really number five mm -hmm. um i went organic this is i i put no massaging in. huh no massaging i went in <laughs> i did it and then i you know let the you know let the dice fall where they may mm -hmm. they fell and and i have to admit mm. um my list is a little interest not interesting it's it's I'm very happy with the list. I'm mm -hmm. very, very comfortable with it. But uh, there's there's several adventures on here that uh, showed up in different places, at, at mm -hmm. least two that really mm -hmm. showed up in places I'm, I'm not suspecting. If you guys were here for last week's uh, last last episode when we did the series, you'll probably be pretty surprised at what, mm. um, what kind of ended up. Or you might not be. <laughs> so is that for a tease or not really a tease? And, and we um, do not know each other's lists either. We do not. As usual, we're surprised. going in here blind. So yeah, yeah we're there, will, there will most likely be some crossovers. Probably. Oh, yeah. Ooh, what's the what's the over under number? 
four, five. Place your bets, folks. Place your bets. <laughs> I'm going to say maybe five. I'm going to say five. Okay. Is, 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 I think is, that's is, a safe number. I think it's a pretty safe number, too. Yeah. I think it's a safe number. Yeah. Um, and we'll see if we get any exact crossovers, exact numbers. That, like, that, I'll be, be interested. Yeah. I'm not so sure we're going to have that. But I, th I do think four or five will have crossovers. I think yeah. that's a good safe bet. Excellent. Um, um, let's yeah. See. How did you do your list, Rick? All right. So for my, I mean, last week I went strictly feels, you know, so this week I went in about face and I went hardcore math on this one, baby. Oh, science uh, and math again. Yeah. Or my take on science, which is a scary thing. It's kind of like a mad doctor's take. Um, if we could get the module rating system graphic up there, which is my little thing. Ooh, it doesn't sound, it sounds better than it looks. It needs to have an acronym. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, or something. Um, those were a number of items that I basically assigned point values to, and I ran all the modules through. So going down the list really fast, I had plot and originality, which is, you know, self-explanatory. I had theme and atmosphere, which I put a lot of points toward because that to me is very important. You know, it's like, you know, whatever. If it's an Egyptian pyramid module, I want to feel the sand under my feet. I want to feel the sun beating on my head. I want to hear the grinding of the secret doors, you know. Spoiler alert. Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe um, <laughs> I put in what I call flow, which is how easy the module is to run and how well the characters kind of are kind of pulled through the module. Because if you go one too far in one direction, you have railroad and you go too far in the other, you get like the old exploratory dungeons that get really sloppy. So that's important to me. I put in encounters, mega points there, role playing opportunities, uh, traps and tricks. And then to a lesser degree, new monsters, climax, uh, villain, if any, uh, how good the map is as far as utility for the DM and, and evocative of the adventure. Uh, I put in art again, how much the art evokes the adventure. And also if the art is just really customized to the adventure, like an example um, in the village of Hamlet, the mode house illustration that Sutherland illustration, the moat house is so fantastic because not only does it match the map, but it really helps the DM kind of understand what the place kind of, you know, how it works. So, you know, mega points there. Uh, extras is just that NPC rosters, you know, DM advice, pull out booklets, graphic booklets, you know, extra spells or magic items. And then play experience is my experience with it at the table. If I've had a good experience, either playing through it or DMing it, got a few extra points for play experience and that's and then i just kind of as you said i i added up the numbers and let it fall where it may so it sounds like you spent a lot more time and effort than i did like <laughs> significantly more yeah significantly i had a more. spreadsheet i have a spreadsheet <laughs> wow yeah I'm, I, but yeah I, I have a feeling if i if, if you check out that pub meeple website you'd mm -hmm. be like hey this is like easier <laughs> I did look at it. I did. Oh. I actually went to the Pub Meeple website, yeah. and I think okay. it's because I had never, I had never gone to that website, and yeah, it's, it's really actually good. so. Check it out, folks. It is yeah. like even way beyond this discussion. It's just you can apply it to a lot of things. You can rank jelly beans in it. You yeah, can rank Marvel you know, movies whatever or you whatever want. your thing is. So yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely got its applications. Um, cool. But yeah. Well, well, for me, though, I and again, I don't think folks who've been following the show probably are, are going to suspect what I'm going to call a great adventure. Uh, encounters, definitely. Setting, definitely. Um, you know, maps, artwork, all important, obviously. Um, you know, and I, I guess, yeah, there's the there's the feel, I think, the ambiance of it. Do you, does it feel like it's a, like you said, a desert adventure? Does it feel like it's an aquatic adventure? Um, that's probably part of it. Um, but a lot of this is also uh, my play experience in it. And that's on both sides as a player and as a game master. And a lot of times, um, you know, it's it, it's regarded to how many times I've played it or how many times I've run it as a game master. Um, but surprisingly, some of the some of the ones really high up on the list, I actually haven't played that many times. So mm. it's, it's interesting how it goes. Um, and then at the end of this, uh, we're gonna actually, put up our entire top 10 list each mm -hmm. of us um and we'll we'll actually kind of just look at it and just see if there's any other any interesting kind of trends or whatnot there um i think will be kind of interesting to kind of take take a look at so uh so with further ado i think we're gonna jump into this list and i yeah. think we're gonna gonna just go for it um uh, who wants to go first i feel like we should roll dice or something so <laughs> it'd be like real appropriate roll some kind of uh 
um you know dice to, to sort of do you want to go first Rick, or do you want me to go first it's totally up to and i have i actually have a die here if you want to uh go there <laughs> that's really funny um <laughs> I, no, I, I probably have one too somewhere but not within not within reach so you know uh, what? why don't you go for it okay i'll I go first like i always go first so go ahead. that's fine no, that's that's that, that's that's totally cool we can we can do that um and then uh let's see i'm trying to think if there was anything else we want to say no i i, I don't think so i think we'll just jump right into it so um, so my number 10 favorite adventure module of all time is Dungeon Module D2 Shrine of the Koatoa. Mm -hmm. And you guys heard me wax poetic about this <laughs> one when we've talked <laughs> about this one in the past. And it's kind it's actually this should be this should be a hint. The fact that this is number 10 mm -hmm. should tell you something about wow, this one's it, you know, crack the list. Um, I guess that's one thing I wanted to mention. So I do have some honorable mentions. I I, I have five that didn't make the list. When I ranked okay. mine, I actually started with 15. <clears throat> so five of them didn't make the cut. So um, I figured at the end, we would just briefly talk about those. Sure. So Trenovic in the in the NCAA tournament, the first four out, I've got like mm -hmm. the first five out, basically. That uh, works. So anyway, I've got three or four, too, that didn't make the cut, but came yeah, close. So that yeah. were real close. Were right there. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, D2, uh, Shrine of the Komatoa, again, Underdark, um, Gygax. So we're kicking it off with Gygax as as the author of of my number ten entry. Good way um, to start. Love the Koatoa. Love the detail of the Koatoa. They mm -hmm. were just not stats. We've talked about this before. They were. Yeah. They had cool weapons. They had cool abilities. They had the sticky glue. They had all mm -hmm. these neat little things, um, which just really set them apart from everything else. The yeah. actual shrine itself, the map, complicated. It would have been great to have a nice piece of artwork to kind of show off the the the, the shrine a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it felt alien. It felt different. Yeah. It felt, you know, even though it wasn't fully aquatic, there was yeah. definitely a presence of water there. Um, for all those reasons, uh, my number mm -hmm. 10 is D2 Shrine of the Koatoa. Good pick. I had a feeling that would show up. And and yeah, yeah talk about a well-realized uh, race of humanoids. Mm -hmm. You know, this this is how you present a, ra a new race, folks. Just look at the Koatoa as an example of a well-realized race. Uh, to me, you can't get a better example than that. All right, turning to my number 10 top adventure of all time, I6 Ravenloft. Um, and I was kind of surprised it didn't get up higher, but I think it just kept getting edged out. Um, here we have, I mean, you know, talk about the theme. We have a fully realized castle here with one of the best uh, dungeon maps ever, I think, frankly. I, I think a lot of Sutherland, I think, did it, but I mean, just mind-blowingly good map talk about a map you couldn't make yourself easily um lots of fun little details a terrific villain i mean you know you're talking about a module so good it really kind of launched the whole campaign setting um and just again doubling down on that villain it's easy to kind of lose the, you know thought of it now but you know you had a what was a vampire who was also a magic user mm -hmm. and at the time that was kind of like a new thing you know like it wasn't like it was, now you don't think innovative. twice about yeah, yeah, the whole monster class thing now is like, okay, that's no big deal. But Thank at the time, <laughs> yeah, but that, right, exactly, you know, almost a detriment. But but at the time, you know, Ravenloft came out, that was really kind of something newfangled a little bit that, uh, you know, was being thrown at us. So just a lot of cool things, a lot of fun little details, you know, the, the crypt, you know, we talked about this already, and I'm sure we'll hit this module in a future show. But, you know, the, the crypt lids with the riddles and all this stuff, lots of fun to be had. So, yeah, that's my number 10, uh, I-6 Ravenloft. Awesome. That's a that's a great start. That was an amazing adventure. Uh, and and folks uh, that are watching along, uh, throw in the chat, like, what your favorite module is or yeah. top three or top five or something. Like that. Don't wait till the end. Throw some interesting <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll share. We'll share. Or if you don't like our choices or love our yep. choices um you know let us know so mm -hmm. all right um my number nine um again uh i was pleased that this one i guess made the cut um shocked at how low this one is um i suspect this one will be pretty high on your list so this will be okay. kind of interesting um my number nine is i won dwellers of the forbidden city mm. um and again this this is a, a you know when i think sandbox adventure i mm -hmm. think dwellers of the forbidden city you get a wonderful huge map of the entire city secluded yeah. in a jungle um and not much of it is detailed but there is a mm -hmm. blank slate for you to just have all sorts of fun in back in the day back when i first played this 
um, I, I didn't, I didn't realize it for its full potential. I was mm -hmm. like, I, again, I kind of looked at it and said, wow, this is really not complete where there's a lot of boring, empty buildings around here. Well, they're empty, but they're only empty if you don't fill them in with your imagination. So, mm -hmm. um, David Cook, um, this is the module that introduced us to the Abolith and the Bullywug. Mm -hmm. I mean, two staples that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, the jungle setting, not often done. Um, love this one. Dwellers of the Forbidden City, my number nine. Nice. Yeah, a lot of good new monsters in there, Mike. Oh, yeah. And and yeah, I think I think that module and what and Isle of Dread are probably your two best sandboxes you can throw at a DM. So yes. you know, when it comes to these classic books, great choice. Uh, my number nine is drum roll, please. S3 Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. Um oh, wow, okay. What a newfangled thing here. Holy smoke. I mean, obviously, you're going to have your lovers and haters with this one. It's one of those. But um, science fiction plus fantasy, you know, how cool is talk about something different to throw at your players. And then, you know, you have fantastic art. You have a really cool imaginative map, lots of cool monsters and just artwork, though. Just, you know, again, it just contributes to the whole package with those handouts and and you know, the different creatures, what they look like, the froggy mop, all this stuff, um, you know, plus your characters can actually walk away with laser guns and things, you know, but there is a built-in system that they don't last forever. So you're giving your players some cool toys for a while, which I think was a really nice uh, technique used in this module. You know, you don't have to worry about your characters, you know, shooting holes full of, you know, the orcs full of holes with laser guns for years and years, because there's like power packs and such. So the power is limited. So it, it, is really well tailored to giving your jaded fantasy group something different, you know. Now, again, for people who don't like a lot of, you know, peanut butter in their chocolate, they may not like this module as much. But I think if you're willing to go out there a bit, really cool. It's got its it's got its warts. It's got a lot of empty rooms. It can be hard to run, you know, through that map, etc. We've talked about it. I think this module shows its age a little bit in some ways, uh, but it made the list. So, Expedition of the Barrier Peaks. Nine. Uh, yeah, I, I am exact. I'm in that other camp right there. I'm I'm in. The, uh -huh. I don't like my sci-fi and my fantasy mixed. I either want to do sci-fi, preferably Star Wars, or <laughs> fantasy, preferably you know medieval European. Mm -hmm. Um, and and that's just that's just the way I am. I mean, I mean, like a lot of those other you know campaign settings that came out over the years, mm -hmm. not really interested in. You know, give me Greyhawk, give me Greyhawk, give me yeah. Forgotten Realms, yeah. and give me you know the core books and i'm i am good to go so yeah, yeah i was never particularly a fan this would never make my list um you know i don't even i don't even know if this one would be in my top 20 to be honest wow. with you. I, I i honestly don't know if it would be so i mean i think i gave it some points because it was just so out there and and the funny yeah. thing is i'm actually a lot like you chris i i really don't like i was and and no offense against it because i know it's got its fans but like i was never a fan of eberron for instance because there's certain you know, when you have like gnomes on the railways and all this kind of stuff, it just sort of violates some internal thing I have that I'm just like you. I, I'm just Greyhawk all the way kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the further we get away from that, when we start getting far out, I think it was the same thing for like Spelljammer and some of these other settings. I think they're very imaginative, imaginative and cool. They're just not my cup of tea because uh, I do hew a little closer to the traditional fantasy, but I don't know why, for some reason, this module just, you know, sucked me in at the time. So, and there, then there's play experience too, that I, I chalked up a few points to that. So. Okay. All right. Still uh, no crossovers yet. My no crossovers number, yet. Yeah. My number eight, I am, this, this could be a little bit of a surprise, uh, but uh, this one definitely, I'm glad this one made the list. Mm -hmm. uh, this one was definitely one that was on my mind because of a show that we did. <laughs> think this year i'm not sure if it was this year or not but this that you know to going through the deep dive of this one really reminded me of just how awesome this adventure was and one that's generally not regarded by folks um as as a, as a high quality adventure but i love it to death so my number eight is uk5 eye of the serpent mm. love nice no, eye of the serpent yeah i nice. mean surprise yeah yeah i mean this this one is it's it's low level Again, it's it's that wilderness crawl slash a mm -hmm. bunch of little dungeons. Um, there's history, you know. There's things that happen early on in the adventure that mm -hmm. that then come back, you know, to play later on in the adventure based on like the history of the setting. Just it feels alive. The setting feels mm -hmm. alive. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's 
it's happening and and um and and it's hard to do low level encounters that are challenged and this one really pulls it off between the yep. environment between the the arctic you start up at the top first of all yeah. an amazing start to an adventure by a rock picking up your your your, your pc and <laughs> dropping you in a nest yeah. at the top of a mountain and the whole idea is to get down and survive mm -hmm. and climb down the mountain that's like the whole deal but it, but there's more to it you discover there's more mm -hmm. of a story it's not literally just like a bunch of random encounters and survival yeah. but they use the environment to yeah you know, there's 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 undead mm -hmm. underneath ice on on frozen over lakes and everything and it's just i just i i, I like it it was kind of a little bit like kind of dipping your toe into um you know not having any equipment to start because you do have some equipment but you know you probably don't have enough food and everything um i, I just you know in in our review of it i really really love mm -hmm. this adventure it was so much fun if i recall you could play it solo you could play one game mm -hmm. master one player mm -hmm. i've run slash played this several times because of that um when it was really hard to get a group of players together so really 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 um, enjoyed that so and and I see we have a comment from Sky too. Um, I'm starting to get the feeling that we aren't going to see keep on the borderlands <laughs> on these lists. Yeah, you you might be correct. You're just going to have to stay around for the we'll whole have hour. To see. To I, I did so. run that on my spreadsheet. I'll give you so, that. Much. Yeah, um, it was it was it was it on was my included. it was uh, not on my list of fifteen. But anyway, uh, yes, uh, that is my number eight. Uh, Eye of the Serpent. Nice pick. I I think definitely an overlooked gem. And yeah. I really love the way that not just the presentation of the ecology, but the way it changes, the way the environment yes. changes yeah, as yeah. you stair step down the mountain, you keep yeah. almost every and yet somehow it all makes sense that they yep. give you all these different types of environments, you know, and creatures encounters. And so it's really and like you said, there's this slowly uncovered sort of uh, mystery or adventure that, you know, this whole the whole quote unquote eye of the serpent kind of is exposed as you go down yep. the hill. So. Yeah, definitely something I didn't even think would be on this list. So good, interesting choice there. All right, my number eight is A4 in the Dungeons of the Slave Lords. Um, I think it's got a great, if somewhat cruel premise. I mean, you know, what could, simplicity, baby. Player goal, survival. I mean, obviously a little bit of a railroady setup, but I think it's well implement, implemented. All the player groups I've run through this and it, I've done it more than once, always enjoyed the challenge, found it a lot of fun. Again, it's really kind of like a dungeon boiled down to more of the simplistic elements, but everything is detailed and works and you get the myconids. You get a fantastic, cool, well-realized new race thrown in here. Uh, and then it leads into the climax of the whole slaver series. And and again, for my for yeah, this yeah. list, I, I stuck the first edition modules and I tried to look at each module absolutely separately, as opposed to you know, there's a lot of good modules that I really like, but they didn't make my list because they they plug into their series well, but they don't stand alone as well. But this one, I felt like it is a self-contained unit and it works. Uh, so if you can get past the fact that you're kind of you know shoving your players into this situation, whether they like it or not, in the beginning which a lot of modules do, frankly, it's a great module. It's a heck of a lot of fun. So that's my number eight in the Dungeons of the Slave Lords. Excellent. All right. My number seven, uh, another one that probably flies under the radar a little bit, but um, but I think on this show, I think we showed it some really good love. Mm -hmm. uh, my number seven, N one, the cult of the reptile god. Mm. Um, so again, I I this one uh I've said this before. I get flat. Here comes all the here comes all the flack. Here it all comes. <laughs> uh, this is Village of Hamlet done right, in my opinion. It, mm -hmm. It's it's so samey to Village of Hamlet, but in my opinion, Douglas Niles just does it a little bit better. I almost think that 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 Mr. Niles looked at Village of Hamlet and said, mm -hmm. "I think I can do this." a little bit better and and mm -hmm. you know sometimes being the first is the hardest we've talked about this some of the early adventures are really tricky yeah. because back then they didn't know what an adventure was what made a good adventure but you get a really well detailed city uh city a village mm -hmm. um and in a really cool dungeon nearby in the swamp and then you've got a a, a pretty decent you know cult story background plot uh that's actually interwoven i think better into the city and the NPCs and it feels tighter and, and it just, it just, it works. Whereas village mm -hmm. of Hamlet is like, here's a village. 
okay, game master, figure out how to get the characters to the mm-hmm. next part and in the next part and in the next part. And and if you're a good game master, you can figure that out. If you're not, well, you know. Yeah. So definitely this one's geared more toward, I think, you know, the neophyte <clears throat> game master. Mm-hmm. Um, but love it. I mean, and, and again, yeah, you're first level and you're going up against Anaga, which is not, <laughs> you know, balanced. But back in the days, um, you know, adventures were not balanced. I yeah. mean, you know, they and gave you're given you some, some help. help. You're given some. You get help. some help with some NPCs so, and whatnot. Yeah. And 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 you know, but still, yeah, there's a good chance. Oh, yeah. You're not gonna make it. Yeah. But that's that's the way the game was back then. <laughs> you know, that's definitely the way. The I game think was like starting back. the first round of combat in a rowboat. Um. Yeah. So, but, but that's yes, exactly. At a rowboat, it just and some and some corridors with with water in them and it just changes yeah. the dynamic completely so yeah. so that is uh that is my number seven and one the cult of the reptile god interesting well we have our first crossover folks and oh. in the same number no way my number seven and one against the cult of the reptile god um i echo chris all chris's points i mean it's it's a wonderfully realized town with a creepy sort of mystery at the heart of it definitely suitable for a home base for the characters afterward uh i think it's still it's definitely got a cult following i think this module now that you know it's seen many years but it's still kind of it's criminal that orlane is not mentioned with the same gravitas as hamlet is it just isn't it, a lot of people don't even know the name orlane if you mention it to them and it's just it's, it's a darn shame uh great utilization of one monster to sort of wrap a whole adventure around you know um so yeah uh i i agree everything you said you said it well um it works it all kind of flows together and it's a and and like you said like what you talked about how the characters in hamlet are are drawn to the mystery that's what i was referring to as flow in that i think the quote-unquote flow in n1 is better than in the village of hamlet because in the village of hamlet game masters kind of led to their own devices and the players as to following the clues and what have you where in N1 is a little more, you know, getting the players there where they need to go, you know, as far as clues and such. So it does, I, I think, I think he looked at Village of Hamlet and learned from it. Oh, so. uh, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. So, yeah. and, and Sky too, you need to run out and go buy a lottery ticket. Like right now you need to go buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and split the winnings with us. Because that was awesome awesome call right there also, there you go while you're at it you should you should throw in there you should throw in there what you think our number ones are going to be yeah you know guess them now folks yeah guess them now before we get to them so all right um uh, my number six we have another crossover ladies and gentlemen oh. obviously it's not the same number since since yeah uh, we haven't revealed his number six yet but mine is a4 into the dungeons of the slave lords mm. and again i thought this one would be much higher but there's just not enough room at the top Yep. For everything that needs to be in there. So, um, and, and, you know, I think you'll be surprised by several of them because, you know, I, I mean, obviously a four for everything that you mentioned, the Mykonids starting with no equipment, um, mm-hmm. the, the desperation part of the second half of the adventure when you're on the Island and the Island is literally being destroyed, sinking into the, uh, into the water from the volcano, um, eruption. Um, and then actually the finale of the whole thing. And then you've got that scene where you've got the slave Lords, um, on the boat and and let me tell you if you can beat those slave lords um at the boat with, <laughs> with minimal equipment and and fourth to seventh level characters tip of the hat to you man yeah. because uh you know i i think that's right up there with the naga taking on first to third level characters um if you're not careful you're getting into way way more than you can than you can yeah. handle with that adventure so um but yeah i mean I, I i love that module i mean it's just it's it's definitely a, a classic had some many many fine memories mm-hmm. of running it um yeah, and and same. even playing it as well so oh um, nice so my number i never got is... to play it but i i dm'd it more than once and as you and i have dm'd that final battle and that was like an hours long that was a long battle wow. tough battle my players made it through i don't know i think they all survived too but it was not you know it was every bit as hard as you would expect, you know, a uh, great climactic battle. All right. What am I at? Number six. Right. Right? Number six. Number six. Uh, definite favorite of Chris's coming up here. Uh, you won the sinister secret of salt marsh. I knew, I knew this would be in my top 10, but I didn't know where this was going to shake out. And it, it ended up landing in number six. Well, even uh, looking at your calculated, your, your math calculations, I don't uh, know how you can figure out where it was going to turn up. It's, it's <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> like I said, so, and, and you know, if it, 
even after doing all that calculus, you'd be surprised. Like I did have some ties, you know, where then I just had a, you know, if I had two that were tied for whatever fourth place or something, I had to decide which one was fourth, which one was fifth. And then we reverted to fields again, I guess, you know, my gut instinct. Um, but yeah, as we've discussed, I think many times in this show, great first adventure for players and DMs. It's like, I don't know. It almost feels to me like you're getting two adventures to the price of one in this thing. Yeah. It's just got a fun kind of Scooby-Doo vibe to the whole thing because it's, it's kind of creepy and mysterious, but never morbid or really scary. Um, you have a Scooby great Doo. example. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Scooby-Doo. Yeah. yeah Scooby -Doo it, that, that's, I mean, all you need is the van parked outside. It's just yeah. got Scooby-Doo written all over that house. And uh, you know, even the second half, you have a great map and example of a sailing ship, which for me as a DM was super helpful. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it, it really sings in a lot of ways. I think I wish there was a few more encounters in, in this module that individually really sang. Like when we were trying to go through our top encounters for this module, I was struggling because they all collectively work, but there's not too many standout encounters. And I think that dropped it down a little bit in my rankings, but it's, it's such a, it, it's a must buy, I think, adventure for folks looking to get, if, you know, people never bought an old classic TR module ever. And they had to go out right now and just buy like five modules that would be one of the five I would tell them to go buy because everybody should take a look at it. I'd tell them to buy my whole top 10 list. Is what I would <laughs> so. so that's my number six anyway. Sinister All Secret right. of Salt Marsh. Okay, yeah. See if that shows up on my list. See if that one makes the cut or not. Yeah, I um, think it'll get there. <laughs> my number five. Um, well, we, we hinted about this one earlier when we were talking about sand. It's coarse. Oh, it's here we go. Comfortable. It gets everywhere. Um, you know, I three Pharaoh. So I knew I had to pick one of the the Desert of Desolation. I mean, mm -hmm. they're they're I just love these modules to death. And, and it really it starts with I three instead of going the finale. I could have gone the finale, um, but really, uh, I, I'm a sucker for Egyptian, and it's got such a strong Egyptian feel to it. And that cover with the with the with the pyramid and the and the and the Pharaoh beckoning toward it and everything, and that that wonderful player's handout of the long like speech uh mm -hmm. that, the, that the pharaoh gives it just sucks you in you can just tell that this this thing just it just it just drips um uh history and and background and everything um you know Tr tracy hickman at his finest um i love the traps i love the and the traps they if this if this makes sense the traps make sense the placement of them and everything it just and it work it wor just works everything just in my opinion works and it just it just feels like you are Indiana Jones in in a ruined pyramid mm -hmm. um, exploring and and you know there's giant spiders and there's just everything you think there'd be there there's mummies I mean it's just it's it's everything you want it just it it just feels like like it's the classic one and um mm -hmm. I just you know it's definitely one of my favorite. A little bit surprised it ended up as low as it did at five, mm -hmm. um, but again, there's there's some there's some interesting ones that cracked the the top four, which um which we'll get to in a moment. So mm -hmm. that's my number five, I three Pharaoh. Nice, and you know there's a module that is part of a series and yet stands alone wonderfully. You could yes. just you could take that right out of the series and just use it standalone, and it sinks. You know, uh, great. And and who doesn't love an Egyptian pyramid, right? Um, all right, going to number five, and and yeah, my uh, my top five are really interesting. There's some that made it here. I don't think this will this may not even make your top ten, but it did, and the math shook it up there. Uh, number five, uh, S four, Lost Caverns of Tsochkent. Um, we got a lot of interesting encounters here, tons of cool new monsters, um, and great extras, and it's all kind of like a dungeon with a wilderness wraparound that is a well-realized wilderness all around it, uh, you know, plus a super cool final encounter that was so good that we both mentioned it in our encounter show as being a pretty wild final encounter. I think on the bad side, it can, you know, it's it's one of those samey sameys that sometimes you can feel like you're going through cave after cave of monsters, and I get that. I think that's probably the one detriment to it. Um, that and you know, the kind of originality or whatever factor, plot factor hurt it a little bit. But still, when I looked at everything and again, all by all the factors on my list as far as art and extras and new monsters and all this stuff, 
it just somehow shocked me by bubbling up to the top where it is. I didn't even think, I thought it'd be maybe number nine or something. I didn't think it'd be number five. Uh, but now that it's up there, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. So uh, yeah, S4, I, I, lost I, I honestly thought this would be in your top three. Oh, I'm wow. surprised that you're hating on this one so much. Ah. I mean, I, I cannot yeah. believe that you were <laughs> dumping and hating on this one. I honestly thought this one would maybe even be two. Oh, uh, wow. Because you seem to, you get a sparkle in your eye when you, because you're one of the only people who can pronounce it, first of all. Um, <laughs> and and you just always kind of wax poetic about it. And I was just like, I honestly I thought do, this too. was going to be a, a, up there really, really higher. So um, I, I'm shocked. I, I'm shocked in and and now I'm starting to question your entire list. So yeah, it's the um, I'm gonna keep you. It's good I can still surprise you after all this time, yeah, Chris. I, uh, I think I think you're gonna get surprises with mine. Yeah, as well. and I you know I have I think I I do get that spark of mine I want to talk about because I have DM'd it and I've D it's mm -hmm. DM'd. It's one of those things that I think there are modules that they there are some modules that read better than they play and there are modules that play better than they read and this yeah. absolutely falls in that latter category i yes. think you read it yes. it comes off as a little flat because you think oh my god there's so many caves with these creatures but when you actually have players going from cave to cave and going through the thing somehow the thing works and all the ring of doors around the central yeah. area there's just I, a lot of coolness in there when you yeah. break it all down I, so, I honestly think that final encounter is what really yeah. kind of does it for me mm -hmm. because if that encounter wasn't there Oh, yeah, I, you yeah. know, again, no, I, I don't even you. know this would have been in my top by top 20 because yeah. because it's just, you know, it's that that final encounter and the setup and everything just makes it sing. Um, but it also feels a little out of place, like some of these other adventures like Pharaoh and, and Eye of the Serpent. You know, it's a little out of place, that final encounter. It's, it's like, wait, what is going on here? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, there's not a whole lot of backstory. It's cool. And, yeah. and you know, I guess, again, they're you know the author that, that's another that's gygax again yeah, right yeah, yeah. gygax may basically assumed like you were going to fill the gaps in a lot mm -hmm. of times he's like you know what i'm going to give you all the tools you make it awesome yeah and yeah. you know I, that was that was my impression mm -hmm. um you know whereas i think some of these later adventures were were better sort of and, and i think you see that you know douglas niles was an amazing novel writer mm -hmm. um he wrote the moonshade uh novels i believe which were amazing yeah. Um, and you can kind of see that in in his adventure that he was a novelist and and that I think really really came out. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. So uh, it looks like people are starting to uh, <laughs> to guess here. Be confident. I can tell you that it won't be uh, to the eight of Falks. Oh, but you know you might be gone to something there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we are on my number four, I believe. Uh, so my number four is, and this this surprised me. This one surprised me quite a bit actually. Uh, and it's a crossover. You won the Sinister Secret Assault March. Mm. Um, I thought this was a strong contender to be number one. Mm. And to be honest with you, I was baffled that this one dropped all the way down to number four. Mm. Um, I'll be completely, completely honest. Uh, you mentioned it. It's the Scooby-Doo adventure. It's really two adventures in one. Uh, mm. We did it on a show not too long ago when we talked about all three of the Salt Marsh adventures. Um, just an amazing setup for the Neophyte Game Master, mm -hmm. uh, a haunted house and then a ship. Um, I've talked about how I've used that ship so many times after uh, yeah. using an adventure. And and currently right now, I've reused it literally the last couple of sessions that I've done uh, with a super secret playtest that I've been working on that my PCs totally went and took a left turn. Um, and I needed something in a pinch and I needed a manor house in a pinch and I grabbed to the shelf i grabbed ghost of salt marsh and just ran with it so mm -hmm. um i was surprised and i thought that might actually make me artificially push that one up higher but mm -hmm. i just you know and i did and i have to admit so the top four i did kind of look at a little bit and i did ponder and i made sure i actually reviewed a couple of them and made sure am i really picking the right one here you know and and i was i was comfortable with it so that's my number four sinister secret of salt marsh nice our third crossover, by the way. Yeah, you said I didn't five. know where that. You I was five. interested to see where that would finally fall on your list. I didn't I'm know who would make number one. I, I figured it would be in the top five, but I didn't know yeah. where. So that, I thought it would be a top three. I thought definitely yeah. top three. I'm shocked yeah. it dropped out. Yeah, it would not have surprised me if you would have had that as like number two or three to be sure. All right, so we're on to number four. We're getting down to the the gritty nitty, as uh, Mrs. Slocum used to say on that show. Uh, my number four pick is T1, A Village of Hamlet. And I want to be clear here, too. I'm kind of divorcing Village of Hamlet here from the Temple of Elemental Evil. I'm just looking at Village of Hamlet, the module by itself. 
Um, acknowledging everything we re just said about Orlane and Hamlet, because I agree with all of that. I think the players here can really struggle to find their direction. I'm literally running a group through this as we speak, and I'm already, as a DM, realizing, hey, I got to make sure I put some breadcrumbs down here. So it requires some work. That all said, Fully realized village, absolutely suitable to be a home base, just like Orlane. And those initial templates that you're given as a DM, those maps, again, at the now we think of a tavern map. Any DM, I think, can whip up a tavern map now. But when that tavern map first for, came out, for me at least, it was so instrumental that you you got an example map of a of a temple, you got an example map of a tavern, you got an example map of a watchtower, and it was just all somehow, you know, just the grand sum all included in this module. And then you get that wonderful, wonderful dungeon. And that's what I think ultimately pushed it up on my list was the inclusion of the moat house. It's just such a cool, well-realized, fun dungeon. And I actually like the moat house dungeon better than I like uh, the dungeon from Against the Cult of the Reptile Gods. So that, I think, the sum of all that, plus a really cool backstory. I love the idea of this village that's defeated evil and seen the evil go its way and then evil is just slowly like vines like kudzu creeping its way back i think it's just such a cool concept um that you know the storyline put some points in there for it too so yeah that's my number four the village of hama i was another one i was surprised i thought it'd be way further down than it was but when the smoke cleared that's where it ended up <laughs> wow, okay all right interesting so all right, so I'm fully expecting the pushback on this one. Um, it, it's first edition. Don't worry, it didn't do anything like I did last <laughs> time with the night below. But this is the one that yeah, I'll get I'll get some pushback on because technically it was on the list last time. Okay. Um, for our series list, but it counts. It counts. So this <laughs> is number three, I twelve Egg of the Phoenix. You knew okay. it was coming. Yeah, you I knew, knew it was coming. coming. I'm yeah. embracing myself. Embracing myself. <laughs> um but it counts it's, it's one module folks i know it was originally r1234 yeah. um but you know and i guess you know theoretically we could have done things like we could have said realm of horrors s1 through 4 was on module we didn't do that yeah um but again uh and, and again folks i will not bore you guys to tears you guys have heard me wax poetic about this adventure and and this one is it's again i've only run it once with my my original group um and we just had such a blast with it and that that definitely pushed me toward again i'm surprised this is not number one or number two mm -hmm. um so there's still a couple of surprises i think yet to come uh but uh but again i love the maps i love the npcs i love the story i love the the overland the cross between overland journey i think this is a, a theme you're kind of seeing a little bit with mm -hmm. mine i like the the cross between the overland journey and in these small adventure sites, instead of one big dungeon, I like the little the blend of a hex crawl and then and then um you know and there wasn't as much of a hex crawl in this one, but there was definitely the 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 dungeons were spread out and there was a whole world map, mm -hmm. um and uh you know I just you know again the memories and and isn't that why we play role playing games at the end of the day? It's for the memories that we create around the table. Um, and this one is steeped in that for me. So it's like, I know this one doesn't appear on anybody else's top 10 list in the history of doing <laughs> this, uh, all five of us or whatever. Um, but, but you know, it's just, it's near and dear to me. And and I just think that it's one thing. And, and I'll be honest with you, ever since our last show, um, I've done a complete reread of it. And, and yes, I've affirmed it belongs in my top five still to this day. Um, because it's like when I pulled it off the shelf to review it for that show, I just got sucked in and decided to read the whole thing from cover to cover again. So, um, nice. not the only adventure that I did that for while we were doing this. So, mm -hmm. um, so that is my number three, I 12 egg of the Phoenix. I was waiting for that. And I, yeah, I honestly, sure you, were. you know, because the first four parts were presented, what is RPGA modules that yes. that's good. That's, you know. I, I haven't included any series, but I think it's fair because that was really the first real official presentation of the module outside of that. So I think that's... that's it's the one really... that most people can get. I think there was only like yeah, 200 yeah. copies or 250 right. copies of so, each other. No, so most, most, part... most people were exposed to it as that book. So yep. yeah, I exactly. I think, yeah, no, you I, I give you a pass on that one because I think that's totally, that's the way, that's the way I saw it. I never Thank saw you. the original format. 
And for that, I'll give you a pass on your number four choice, T1. <laughs> so. Oh, wait, I got more for you. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> All right, where are we? Number three. All right, I number think this three. one will pass muster. Well, maybe. I don't know if it'll maybe. be on your list, but I think folks out there in general have good feelings about this one. My number three uh, was G3, Hall of the Fire Giant King. Um, obviously part of a much bigger hole. I wasn't going to do the, you know, the dungeon magazine thing and try to throw three or even six modules at you. Cause that would be cheating big time. Um, but out of all the component pieces, this one to me sings to me, this is first edition in 16 pages. That's it. You know, it really is talk about getting your money's worth for 16 pages. You get a cool, three level dungeon a lot of interesting counters a lot of sinister traps there are some cool villains in here you've got you know the queen snurry who tries to behead you you know deceit you and to behead you you've got ombi the dwarf from you know the incredibly evil dwarf and and the introduction of the drow you know among other things um just a lot of neat encounters that all support that theme uh, plus a lot of just little cool details like this little twisting passage that goes down to a tomb where you can lose your direction or a combat in a torture chamber where somebody tries to throw you into an Iron Maiden and lock it shut on you and many other things like that that are just littered pure Gygaxian genius. Um, I knew this would be in my top five. I didn't know where, but here it is. And I'm frankly not shocked. Uh, so yeah, G3, Hall of the Fire Giant King. Uh, got a definite soft spot for this one and I've run it very successfully so can be tough for the characters no no two ways about it challenging for your players but very enjoyable experience so excellent uh, yeah I, you know with those seven modules in that series which was the number one on the dungeon magazine list I kind of limited myself to one from that mm -hmm. series and that was D2 mm -hmm. um, if I had the you know you know crossbow hand crossbow to my head Mm -hmm. um and if i had to pick another one it would probably be this one um because i you know i i, I have to admit it, it would probably and again i played this one a ton of times mm -hmm. um more than i played trying to the kotoa actually um and and really had some really good real really good memories from this one especially one summer in probably it was 80 i don't know six maybe summer of 86 maybe 85 yeah so playing this one so um excellent choice so all right we're at my number two and this one's interesting uh this was <laughs> the one that surprised me it got this high um and i'm not surprised it's on my list but i was surprised i got this high and i did go back and read it to make sure um and i totally agree with it and i could boy i could really make the uh, argument it could be number one i mm. think too so uh, so this one, I think, will surprise a lot of people. This is this is a definitely another under the radar one, mm -hmm. um, and I think it is the oldest of the adventure, not, youngest. I guess that would be youngest. It came out the last, the least. Okay. Last. Yeah. So, huh. yeah, this is B10 Night's Dark Terror. Mm. Um, this oh, is yeah, 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 and an, a good yeah again an amazing adventure, mm -hmm. folks. Uh, again, if you need to buy one, it, well, you'll you lose you lose some of the value on this and everything. But but this one has a wonderful poster map of a mm -hmm. fortified homestead that becomes under attack by goblins, lots of goblins, and there's a bunch of NPCs. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's actually they give you cardboard punch out counters for mm -hmm. all the goblins and the NPCs, and then you got your PCs and that. Um, it's amazing. That's just the start of it. That that mm -hmm. could have been a whole module right there. Mm -hmm. Easily could have been a module right there. But then, then you launch off into this whole hex crawl with all these little small dungeons spread all around this this cool little slice of the world, um, all tracking down this like ancient um, uh, civilization. And and there's clues and there's there's slavers. Uh, there's more goblins. There's the goblin lairs. That the goblins are not just here's goblins. It's like you've got the red viper goblins and you've got the wolf skull goblins and and just tiny little touches that just make them set apart. Like hey, these are not the same goblins we're fighting. Um, amazing. Um, this is a another UK production. Um, so uh, just absolutely amazing. Um, the the detail of this, mm -hmm. the storytelling, and uh, I'm telling you folks, this is a great great uh inclusion if you're if you're not sure about something and also it's double length it's 64 pages 
compared to 32 and it's got extra fold out maps mm -hmm. there's player handouts there's a whole pull out section in this in the uh, in the center to hand to your players i'm telling you uh this is so done well and done mm -hmm. right um I, I love it to death and and i still do i've only run it once which mm -hmm. is interesting um you know probably maybe that's what keeps it out of the number one spot however um i love a b10 night stark tower um and again mm -hmm. I, think was, I think it was 85 it came out or 86 it was yeah, late. it was on the late side yeah yeah it was it had, it had the the more recent tsr yeah. logo and um you know but it wasn't second edition it was still it was mm -hmm. actually basic slash expert it was for levels yeah. two to four it was that it's supposed to be that first module when you're done with basic and moving to expert but but still with the training wheels on, not like Isle of Dread where they just dump you on an island with dinosaurs and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, good luck. Go figure it out. <laughs> so, uh, so I love it. Uh, B10, nice I Dark forgot Terror. all about that. I should have guessed that would be on your list. And honestly, I, I never, I don't have any play experience with it. And I don't know it as well as a lot of the other entries I looked at, or I think it would have made it higher because it's definitely one of those modules where you get your money for your buck. Holy smoke. You know, you yeah. could probably, you could probably, you know, uh, wrench out hours and hours and hours of play oh, yeah. out of oh, that yeah. thing. So talk about, you know, money, you know, hours for your money or whatever you want to call it. Um, really good choice all right i'm putting up the i'm putting up the batter's cage i'm protecting okay. myself from tomatoes and and whatever else with this entry because this one i thought i knew it'd be in there my top 10 but i didn't think it would be anywhere near as high as it shook out uh here it comes folks get ready s1 the tomb of horrors yeah yeah wow Wow. arbitrary arbitrary traps and meat grinder yeah 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 get you over you realize this isn't a top list of gygax module no <laughs> i know but you know sometimes the master shows each room in this thing is an unique interesting experience it drips atmosphere it's challenging as hell and the art and everything all supports it first book of you know player illustrations to show your players as they go through it uh, I mean, if you can basically just get over the fact that it's a dungeon full of traps and, you know, that it's a little arbitrary in places, it is hysterical fun. I have run this no less than eight times for eight separate groups. I have run it for groups of all backgrounds. Two of the groups I ran through this were beginning D&D players that had never played D&D before. And I throw them my first experience as a player. Do they still play D&D? <laughs> yes, I'm getting to that. My first experience as a player in a module was in the Tomb of Horrors solo. And I'm still talking about D&D 30 years later. So there you go. There you have it. They all and every group enjoyed it. Um, so, you know, to me, it is absolutely stood the test of play. Um, I don't know if I recounted it during our, our show on the on the module when we went into this show, but the best at table experience I ever had in a module was during the tomb of horrors because in the climactic and talk about a great final villain, you can't top Asarak. You just, that's it. He, he's up there with Strahd. Um, in the final encounter room, you know, you've got this lich skull that comes up and sucks souls out of people and three of the three. And then this is the last one, of the last times I played this three characters survived to make it to the final room and two of them went down to the soul sucking. And the last one was uh, being played by my past friend, Willie, was playing a mage, a high level mage. And he saw the skull come up and he was the last character and he knew his it, the writing was on the wall. And he calmly looked and everybody, it was one of those incidents where everybody was standing around the table, you know, excited. And he said, he looked me straight in the eye and he said, whatever his mage's name was, takes out his staff of the magi and he says i crack it over my knee and he triggered a, a retributive strike within this little closet like area where this lich was and that was literally the climax of that module and we rolled the dice and his magi ended up going to another plane of existence and the lich was destroyed and etc and it was it was what an ending to an adventure you know <laughs> so, yeah yeah so it is absolutely the effect of much play because i've run this module probably more than any classic module which surprises even me again like you said you know you think mm -hmm. well that's a good way to get people to never come back and play a DD. but again it's about purity the purity of giving new players a hallway and you do this or you do that or you take this door or you take that arch it's just 
it's it makes it easier for new players frankly and some of the traps are just death or not death well whether it's 10th level or first level it really doesn't matter how many hit points you have with a lot of these traps whether it's 100 or 10 hit points so with a little help it's actually well engineered into a, an early introductory module as insane as that sounds because i know because i've done it and i've done it successfully so i stand behind it i i accept the module uh, that, that thrown missiles with honor <laughs> that's my number two that, that's one i didn't think it'd be is, that high but that is a worthy there. worthy explanation no. i i you, you made a believer at it. all right so. i defended myself <laughs> yes still never gonna make my top 20 but there no, you go. I appreciate so, that. No, yeah. You and a lot of people, I think. So, yeah. well, it's going to be tough. We just got the number ones to go to. We've, yeah. we've, we've crossed over three times. It's going to be really, really tricky to get five crossovers, which I yeah, call I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. So, any last people in the in the chat? But it's funny last when you start talking folks. about Tome of Horrors, the chat blew up. Obviously, they they don't care about these uh, these under the radar <laughs> ones that I'm talking about. But you you bring in the 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 heavy guns, and all of a sudden. Just the comments start start flying. So if you yeah. want to get any last guesses in there before the yeah. number ones, this is the time to do that. Um, I am gonna unveil my number one. My number one, I am fairly certain, did not change from my last ranking. Um, and that is I6 Ravenloft. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do have a fourth crossover, so okay, it's all good. gonna come down all to right. you to see if we cross over for a fifth time. Uh mm. Ravenloft, everything that you mentioned about Ravenloft, it starts with the maps. Then you move to the awesome plot, the tarot card system, where um, based on the tarot cards drawn in an early, early encounter mm -hmm. that I'm sure most of the PCs thinks a throwaway uh, uh, social interaction encounter in the beginning, when you draw those tarot cards, that determines where the bad guy is, where the artifacts are located, the powerful magic items, and you can replay it so easily. Just like you mentioned, you've run um tomb of horrors uh eight times i think i've run soon as the secret of salt marsh the most times probably six or seven mm -hmm. might be seven now i've run ravenloft i think five times and wow. i've run it with the same group twice huh um which is crazy and with they didn't years know it was, in between or or like it was like years in between yeah, years yeah. in between um yeah. actually i think i ran it like during the I don't know if it was third edition, but like we played it back, um, like first edition rules. They didn't they didn't realize they were there until they got back to a little while, but then they, then it all kind of came back. It was probably ten years in between, but uh -huh. I actually used the module, the same module, the same encounters and everything, with the exact same group, and and we had nice. just as good a time that mm -hmm. time as we did the 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 other the, the other the first time that we played it. So. Um, Tracy Hickman, again, second time Hickman shows up on my list, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, and uh, and just everything there, it just, you know, it, it spawned a whole um, a whole campaign setting. And and there's a reason why it keeps getting reprinted and reprinted and reprinted two times in 5e. Um, it's just it's just amazing. Um, yeah. And uh, it's just it's just awesome. So so my number one, I6 Ravenloft. Nice. And and that and, and Ravenloft White, right? It was in their top five for the uh Dungeon Magazine 30. They had it up there too. And yes, they did. Yeah, what they're number there. two. So yeah. yeah. So you're clearly not alone in that in that respect. Um I, I've never played Ravenloft, and I have to tell you, just even hearing you speak about it makes me want to run that. So mm. I've got to that's one I've got to talk about read cover. That's one I've got to get out, really read cover to cover and, and yeah. you know get down to running that thing because uh, it deserves to be some modules deserve to be run that deserves to be run, you know in front of my group all right well the heat's on me i do not have a fifth crossover for us on unfortunately Aww. yeah uh one of my longtime favorites that you know shook its way i didn't think it would make it to the first position again but the math bore can, out can, my... can i guess can I go for guess? it i'm gonna guess who what they guessed in the um in, in the chat sky two had this in search of the unknown uh no be one no it's not be one okay. i have a softer okay. spot for in search of the unknown than i think most folks do yeah and i like it equally or better than b2 but um yeah. i don't know why just something about mike's car Ooh. writing and stuff is i don't fun. But, i don't know no. where you're going with this God, I really no idea. i thought oh i oh, thought you guessed oh, this in the oh, middle oh, come on <laughs> oh my god how can i oh i'm just i'm an idiot so all right do you want to exactly. say or no you want me to it's it's, it's c1 so I can't pronounce it. It's he's wearing it's on his freaking shirt and I didn't get it. So 
<laughs> yes, my number one is uh, Hidden Shrine of Tomochin, and I did put it through the math, so it it bore out both the field test and the math test for me. To me, it it hits just about every beat on that list of mine. Great atmosphere, the history and the work is in there. Uh, super interesting encounters, fantastic trips, tricks and traps. I mean, you can't you don't get better with the tricks and traps than it has in here. All the monsters in here, and you get some new ones, are very thematic. They really fit into, and even the even the theme is extends to the magic items. Like there's a place where instead of just finding an old ring of flying, the characters you know play a game and they find a whistle flying with a bird ornamentation. As long as they blow the whistle, they fly. I mean, that's the extent that the theme carries through. Uh, you know, there's even a metamorphosis alpha Easter egg in there. Every it's it's so much fun. And it's, you know, it's like a tourney module, and yet it doesn't fall into that tourney module kind of trope. You know, we've I've talked about that before, what I call the funhouse modules, where, you know, you walk into a room and there's a rope hanging from the ceiling. What do you do? And there's nothing. And it just, like, makes no sense in the dungeon ecology. This whole module, you can run it as a tournament, but it makes sense. And, and you can even run it backward or forward. You can run it in yeah. either direction. I think... The only bad point I counted against it in a big way was the lack of a final bad guy or big villain at the kind mm -hmm. of end. That's the one, you know, the one ward on this module. But other one, other than that, to me, it sings in every area. Um, I guess the only other thing is the obvious is that, you know, if you is the theme. If if people have a problem because it's basically an Aztec pyramid and it doesn't feel as traditional fantasy as it, in the same way though that Pharaoh doesn't. So if for some reason you have a problem with that Aztecian kind of theme or feel, then you may not dig this module as much. But I think if you can get your head around the theme and you're okay with that, it's terrific fun. And I've run it several times, had a whole bunch of fun. And like I said, every room is almost like its own little, you know, challenge and interesting encounter if you go in. And a picture book, you know, another module with a picture, picture book mm -hmm. to show the character, you know, the players. So it, it's all there, I thought. For, that's my number one hidden shrine of Tomochin. Awesome. So, all right. Well, that is our top 10. So, um, if Elena, if you could toss up our whole top 10 lists at one time, why don't you start with mine first? Mm -hmm. Um, and a couple of interesting things here that I just want to talk about, and I don't know if Rick mm -hmm. wants to talk about any of it. Uh, so I only have one guy Gax on here, I have two Hickmans, but I have two Graham Morrises on mm -hmm. here. Um, he was a co author for um night's dark terror there was actually three authors um and then he wrote uh eye of the serpent so i get the feel there those definitely feel same um i had three uk adventures on my list so Surprise. that should tell you yeah. something right there man they yeah. across the pond they knew what they were doing um and here's here's my excuse me here's my five that didn't make it in and this is the order that they didn't make it in um uk one beyond the crystal cave i was shocked that 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 did not make my top 10 actually i was very surprised mm -hmm. um before the lost city um was my next one that would have been number 12 number 13 lucky number 13 would have been a one secret of uh wait uh slave pits of the undercity mm -hmm. not secret that um then n4 uh we just talked about this one not too long ago treasure hunt um the zero mm. level adventure um and then cracking my top 15 would have been T1 Village of Hamlet, and just like you said, just T1, not the yeah, entire yeah. Uh, T1 through four. So, uh, so that was the that was my first five out. So, what were nice. what are some? Uh, I, so, uh, you know, that was uh, that was my list. So, okay, when we pull Rick's top ten list up sure. there, and and besides the overabundance of Gygax, yeah, I was going to say looking insights. at it now, and I didn't even think about that until you said it, Chris. A, a full five of my ten entries were Gygax, yeah, and that four was of your top five, yeah, and that was not inside really the numbers. But uh, it a little just, bit of next. I knew Gygax would be in there, but I didn't think it would be like fifty percent of the list. That surprises even me. Um, yeah. So that that's interesting, and evidently i wasn't you know afraid of some ground breakers because there are definitely some modules here that go out of the normal strain but i've mm -hmm. always said that like a lot of my favorite shows i tend to like the shows that are unusual you know city on the edge of forever is my favorite star trek show but it's really not a classic star trek episode because it doesn't feature a lot of the things that star trek is kind of known for and yet it, i think it's one of the best star trek episodes ever and i think that's the way i fell into this list and that some of the things that were a little unusual somehow worked you know i think because they were groundbreaking at the time they just stood out to me 
or something. So, uh, yeah. So honorable mentions. Oh boy. I've got, yeah, I got a bunch, but, um, ones that almost made it, uh, I won dwellers of the forbidden city was super near miss. Yeah. Um, X one I'll dread. I, you know, my heart wanted to get it on the list, but my, it just, it, it went way down in the points. It just did not make it. Um, Pharaoh, as you mentioned, uh, I like that whole series, but I think Pharaoh stands out as the one of the three that is the strongest, you know, the same way I, I, I pulled one out of the giant series. I think that's like, you know, my whole, the fire giant King for that series. So yeah, Pharaoh was a near miss. So those three, I can name right off the top of my head were mm -hmm. very near misses. Uh, there was yeah. a few others, but those were the ones that just missed the list. Two, and two I mean, questions. just two questions from the chat. One, where did you get that t-shirt from? <laughs> and two, how does B2 not make this these lists? So well, you know, let I'll let's take them out of order or I'll I'll okay. answer the second. How about that? Um, I guess I'm gonna have to answer both. B2 was on my list. I threw B2 actually as my control, I guess you could call it. I put it in there just I it's it's not one of my top 10 B2, but I put it in there just as a test case to see how many points it would get just to see, you know, because if D2 suddenly showed up in the middle of my thing, then I was going to have to go from entering like 15 modules to entering like 25 into my grid because I knew that was going to throw, you know, throw everything off. Um, as far as the T-shirt, it was a present. So I have no idea the store mm -hmm. vendor or anything else. A buddy of mine who knew I was a fan of this module uh, sent it to me. So yeah, clearly not me because I totally <laughs> yeah forgot so about your obsession the, uh, with this yeah. module because <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> so yeah, that was I can't terrible. believe you forgot that. That's so oh I, thought, I can't I, I can't believe it either. For that. Yeah. I can't I cannot believe it either. I think I just got yeah. lulled into all these other See choices that? and I just was like. Oh, I just totally completely forgot about that. I was just too obsessed with S4 being in your top three, I guess. I so. know. Uh, well, you and everybody else. And I think if you're like me, when I had to distill this list down to 10, it was hard. I, oh, yeah. I realized, hey, man, like, yeah, I, I, it was killing me almost when I had to pick 10 because I w could have easily done 15 or 20. Oh, yeah. I could have been done... happy with all 20, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I could have done 20, I think. I think after 20, it gets a little... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think easily could have done... I, I think I would have been pretty good with 20. So I'm gonna, maybe next year, maybe we'll have yeah. to do 11 to 20, which is just not an interesting show. But <laughs> um, but yeah. So anyway. Um, well, I, thank you. Uh, Rick, what do you got to tell the folks about sure. what you normally do? Given well, the as always, folks, uh, we're delighted you could join us and, and sit down with us, you know, virtually at the table and talk about these old modules that we so love. If you enjoyed the show, give us a like, give us a subscribe, you know, ring that little bell if you're watching us later on YouTube or follow us. All that's good for us. We appreciate it. Helps us bring the shows you like and keep the comments coming both during the stream and, and after because we read them all. and We're so happy you guys join in with us and, and participate. We love that. Uh, our next show is coming at you Sunday, November 13th at 8 p.m. And this is our last show before I we take a little holiday break, just a little time to recharge over the holidays. Chris and I, even we need a break sometimes. On uh, November 13th, we're going to feature our holiday gift guide. So among other things, we're going to talk about uh, gifts for those favorite geeks out there, D&D &D, you know, related and geek related gifts. We had some fun with that doing that last year. So we're, we're going to do that this year as our sort of sign off show, the last show of the season. So we hope you can join us. Awesome. Excellent. Um, and uh, we'll end up with our Pearl of Wisdom. Uh, you know what? I really didn't even think about a Pearl of Wisdom for this show. Normally, I've got a couple <laughs> of places I can go. Uh, I guess I'd be like, here's my pearl of wisdom. If you guys are not familiar with uh, one of the modules on one of our lists that you heard us mm -hmm. talk about, uh, give it a check out. You can buy most of these for like five dollars PDF on uh, Drive Through RPG. Um, you know, hey, check it out. Like I said, there's you'd be surprised. There's something you can um, uh, find that you can use. Uh, it, you know, even if you don't use the whole adventure, there's always a, a bit an encounter, a monster, or something that you can that you can utilize or maybe the whole thing. So, um, and if you do, I would definitely push you towards B10 because wow. most people are not aware of that one. And, and again, bang for your buck, bang for your buck. Unfortunately, yeah. you don't get PDF. You don't get those cardboard counters though. Unfortunately, yeah. miners, mine are still unpunched. I didn't actually use mine. I used other too. proxy things because I didn't want to punch mm -hmm. them and, uh, and I yeah. still have them. So but, I still uh, yeah. have, yeah, mine are still 
very in very shockingly good shape. And for a, for a, a whipped up pearl of wisdom, I think that's a really good one, folks. I would say both the entries you're less familiar with that we mentioned, or even the ones that you think you disagree with, but maybe you're not as familiar with those modules as you think you are or haven't seen them recently. It's pretty easy now to actually get a copy of a lot of these modules. A lot of them are available in PDF format for like, you know, five or ten dollars. I would say, you know, get yourself a hand, uh, get your hands on one of these, you know, even if you have to go to eBay, some of these lesser known entries and and you're going to find some uncovered gems here. So definitely good advice. Uh, my Pearl of Wisdom beyond just echoing that is, uh, again, if you could just put up my rating system, Alana, um, I would just say like. I'm going to take that little list I use to kind of rate these modules, and I'm going to try to keep that in mind when I design going forward. And I would encourage DMs when you're writing modules to try to think about, like, why you like the modules you like or the adventures you like. What are the things about them that you really like? And now when you're designing, try to double down on that. If you think, you know, you really like this module because of the atmosphere or the mystery or because of the plot. Try to take that and distill it into your own adventures. And if you hit enough of those beats that are on your list, you know, not my list I'm presenting now, but your version of my list, I think you'll come up with a really good adventure. Excellent. Excellent advice. Uh, last question in there. Um, are these all editions and Judges Guild stuff open to our top tens? I would probably say no. I think I really tried to keep myself to the first edition adventures and I tried to keep stick mm -hmm. myself to TSR. Same. Um, but yeah, so I was like that, but that's interesting. That's an interesting sub list that we could do. We could do a list of top 10 dungeon magazine adventures yeah, or, there's, or there's top 10 things we can non TSR do. adventures or something. So it gets a little muddled then, but yeah. you know, that's something we could always look into, but that's a great one. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So for anyway. my list, yeah, for my list, I definitely stuck to first edition TSR for whatever yeah. that's worth so. it. But yeah, you have to draw a line somewhere. Well, last last yeah. show I crossed it a little bit, but, <laughs> um, but it's fine. It all worked out in the end. So, um, but thanks everybody for joining us. We really appreciate it. We had a lot thanks, of fun folks. with this one. Obviously, this was one of the more funner shows to prepare for and actually do. So we we had a blast. Um, so so thanks a lot for joining us on a Sunday night. Uh, we did go over a little bit tonight, but it was it was worth it. We knew these episodes would be a little bit longer because of uh, the content in the top ten list. So. So thank you uh, to all the uh, the watchers and thank you for uh, catching up with us on YouTube afterwards. And with that, we will uh, bid you adieu and we will see you guys all virtually in three weeks. Uh, everybody uh, have a great Halloween and a safe uh, return trip from Gamehole Con and we'll see you guys next time. Good night.